thank you very much. We do have some time for questions. Uh, I wonder if I could ask uh, all three of our speakers to come to the table at the front. That might make it uh, easier to have the conversation back and forth. Um, um, so I'd like to open this to the floor now. Does, does anyone have any questions? And I'll, I'll wander around with the mic so you can be heard on the recording. OK, so I'll go here instead. Uh, so I guess uh, perhaps more of a comment for Maria. Uh, when you put your slide about the uh, incentives that governments have, I think you should perhaps think about putting also uh, having access to financial markets or improving their credit rating. Uh, that's with the whole doing business reports and things like this. That that tends to be a big sort of carrot uh, to be done um, for, for investors who want to feel they have clear rules of the game and, what, and what's out there. That that's that's a big motivation. Um, I think one of the examples to hear so what in bullet two about what happens when you open it up in non-democratic regimes, I think was very interesting, I think it was last year, the case in Iran, where they open up and having people have access to the budget numbers and seeing how much money was being transferred to, to certain groups, that was stirred off uh, a very significant sort of social revolt. Um, so I think that that's an interesting sort of case that happened. Um, for Alvaro, uh, Tremenda presentación, eh, muy bien. Um, so for the, um, the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, so for example, that type of platform, uh, I think it's in incredibly interesting. It, it's being done, I think, some places for specific projects. For example, I think in Mexico they have for, for big works like the airport where they're having the same thing of putting all the contracting and how it's done. Uh, so, so you said it was built in a civic tech approach. So uh, let's say the, the coding for that for the platform and it's available for to be replicated if 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 wanted to uh, or to engage with that group if we wanted to replicate it somewhere else in the in the region or in else in the world is that a possibility it's about to be releasing open code okay. yes hello i had a question for alvaro which was um I have had some involvement with the Open Government Partnership, and I understand that Buenos Aires is one of the sub-national pilots for the Open Government Partnership. I'd be interested to know, because I'm just interested in general to understand the theory of change of the Open Government Partnership and how does it actually work to support um, the values that, that underpin the OGP in practice in particular places and communities. So I'd be interested to know at what point in the development of, of your work did the was that status acquired of being a subnational pilot of the OGP? And what difference has it made? Has it made a difference, do you think, and in what sense has it made a difference, just to kind of help us understand what that status could bring to you know, the potential for more open government at the level of cities or regions in the world? I think I was going to ask the same question, but in a different way. No, I mean, for Alvaro, um, very interesting presentation, and thank you. Um, my question is really about the link between transparency and accountability, and, and you, you, you show, obviously, uh, you know, f fascinating and very user-friendly way of accessing that data, but I just wonder, um, in terms of the accountability aspect, uh, what is it thrown up in terms of the, the public works that are happening too slowly, too expensively, just not being done very well at all? Um, and if that is showing differences between approaches from different ministries, for example, how is that being dealt with and how can the public then see that the information that they have been given actually leads to changes in the future about how these, these programs are eventually done. I think it links also to what Maria was saying, I mean, and the question of, you know, open washing. One reason maybe why data sets are published is that oh, transparency and accountability are not the same thing and you, the transparency obviates the need to be accountable. Mm -hmm. um, as for the question on, on, sorry, on OGP, uh, we, we entered OGP in, I think it was January or February 2016, and we started uh, working on the, on the platform a couple of months later. And in general, uh, for us, you know, being part of OGP, it, 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 uh, it was a big help. It gave us uh, an international sounding board, an international source of legitimacy for our work. You know, most of my previous life was in civil society, and, and, 
and I joined the government two years ago. And promoting transparency and accountability projects, we, even you are even 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 being member of the government is not an easy task. It's very hard to find allies within the government to have to find transparency champions. And it's not because they don't I mean, you know politicians don't care. I mean they have other priorities. They want to. To, to appear on the newspapers, you know, opening a new school or a new hospital. So that international support and recognition that provides OCP, for us it was very important, uh, not, not so much for the, the commitments that are in the action plan, in the formal OCP's action plan, but for all our, our, all our uh, remaining initiatives. Sorry for my English, I had an overnight flight from Argentina, 12 hours, I didn't sleep at all. <laughs> so I'm amazed I'm still talking. Um, but yeah, we launched other projects that are not w inside the OCP action plan that are more ambitious than the commitments that we have. Uh, we have a project called the Open Olympic Games. We are hosting the, the Youth Olympic Games in October. And for the very first time, uh, an Olympic game or a, that together with the World, Soccer World Cup, the Football World Cups are the most uh, amazing and large sports event and usually accused of you know, misappropriation of funds, etc. We will have, we will use open government tools to generate trust in the community about the uh, decision making in terms of money and what will be the legacy of those tools. We, we also uh, being part of OGP help us to open all the other projects, you know, not only public work pl projects. We have another platform, which is an, an, an open, uh, it's, a, it's a window to the management city, a management, management system of the city. So you, now you can have access to all the projects in the, in the city of Buenos Aires. So being part of OGP was instrumental to, to, to achieve, uh, you know, to, uh, to achieve other projects. Um, and as for your question in terms of the information, I, I think you have, uh, you have a terrific point and we are hoping, we are doing our best in terms of putting the information out there. Now we are expecting that a public dialogue will be, a public discussion will be generated among you know, the government, civil society, the media. In our case, the media is key for triggering those discussions to taking you know, the data set uh, and doing a really deep analysis of what information are we sharing, how much are we paying for what we buy. In this process, we also open uh, all our procurement system. So now everybody can access, you know, to the information on how much we're paying for tables, for, you know, uh, mattresses for hospitals. So that kind of uh, information is out there. And there is still probably, a, a, we need a, a bit more of a push from civic tech organizations, civil society, and the media in terms of using that information. Um, I say that as a former civil society member, as a politician now, you know, sometimes politicians are afraid of these dialogues. But well, this is, this is the, 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 the side effect of opening information. Another question over here. Hola, hello. Um, thank you for these presentations. Um, especially the last one made me think a lot about once you have incentives, how people start working around them and manipulating. And I just want to know if there are any thoughts on can I trust the data sets that are being published? Like, okay, we publish them, we have them online, people are using them now. Can I trust the data there? Are we measuring that? Thanks. Well, that's, that, that's a hard question. I mean, um, and that's also my question. And unfortunately, not something I'm, I'm researching. But yeah, that's my question. So for instance, those data that have been published in Moldova very quickly, just, you know, with a, obviously, I mean, I don't know, but like it, it sounds from the, at least from, from the evidence, um, uh, from the research those Israeli political scientists did, that they really just released it before the, the visit of the World Bank. So, um, yes, the question, it's a good question. I mean, is the data reliable, but... For example, and when you're working with the government, do you have pressures from different actors of, hey, let's publish something different? 
that's I guess that's a rather question <laughs> for you. I mean, um, yeah. yeah. What was the question and answer? I'm sleepy. <laughs> Uh, to to tune it a little bit to change it. No, uh, no. Usually, it, it, you find uh, agencies that are reluctant to open information, mm -hmm. and you have to explain them why it's part. You know, why uh, it should be open. For example, in the case of Buenos Aires, we're rank, we are ranking very high in the Open Data City Index of Argentina, and we want to go higher. So. We need to open, for example, the procurement information. Uh, and then what we do have is pressure from civil society, from civic tech organizations that, that tell us, oh, that platform is great. Do you have the data, the data set for that? When is it going to be online? And they keep you know, asking for that information. Um, but you know, yeah, that would be it. OK, we have one more question in the back room. Yeah, so this is Eric uh, from GovX, and one more for Alvaro to keep him awake uh, before he can go take a nap after this. Um, but I have two questions. So one is I think it's a really great portal, and I know Alvaro just so that you all know. I'm curious how often the information is updated um, and how frequently you all are going to be able to collect that information across uh, all the ministries. And second, is there any thinking as you all go, go forward with interplay with in-person, non-online, uh, ways of engaging. For example, we did some interesting work with the place in Tunisia where you can publish all the same data, but actually what you just need is a sign at the site that tells you all the same information. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious if you all have experimented with kind of using the online format, but also any offline ways of engaging people around this information. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we're working with the chief of cabinet office and we updated every three months, but the, the, the main chunk of the information, the, of the update Information is at the beginning of the year when the you know when when the plan the planning is conducted. So you have all the new projects. Sometimes there are like very important projects that we are not allowed to upload them because they are used as a political you know um, uh, development. They wanted to keep it secret until a particular time. Um, and then no, we're not doing that. That's a great idea to 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 provide information on site to the citizens, to the neighbors, because there are many areas of the city that where the access to internet is, is lower than in others. So that's a great idea. We'll think about it. Thank you. I can work it with you if you want. Do we have any more questions? I, I realize that we are close to the time when we go to the drinks reception. But, uh, so. okay. Well, so I'd like if everyone could just please join me in thanking again uh, all our speakers for some really wonderful, fascinating talks. Very much appreciate it.